So in this talk, I'm going to try to define the notion of limit for a function of a vector variable. What that essentially means is the notion of limit for a function of multiple variables. Because if you have a function of variables x1, x2 to xn, you can think of the inputs, instead of think of them as multiple inputs, you just think of them as a vector input. But the function itself, in uh, for this video, the function itself is a, is a scalar function. Maybe I'll just move the word scalar. Right, so it's, it's just a function which takes real values. The domain of the function is is a multivariable thing, it's a vector thing, but the output of the function is just real numbers. Okay. So so we are going to try to, to give the epsilon delta definition. And out here I have the general epsilon delta definition, not just the epsilon delta, but the conceptual version of the definition. What does it say? It says limit x approaches to fx equals L if for every neighborhood of L, there exists a neighborhood of C such that, over here, for all x not equal to C in the neighborhood of C, fx is in the neighborhood of L. So, in order to now translate this or convert this into a definition here, what do I need to explain? Neighborhood. Neighborhood. I abbreviate it NBHE. This is just neighborhood, like the things around you. Let's see how you would, what neighborhood concept we would use. What would it mean to say, say that two vectors are close to each other, right? So there's two neighborhood concepts we need. One is for the target side, one is for the domain side. Now on the target side, there's no problem because target side is just real numbers and for real numbers, you know our neighborhood concept is based on open intervals. But on the domain side, you may not be familiar with what the right notion of neighborhood is. So the neighborhood concept is as follows. So for any vector A, you can define a ball of radius R centered at A where R is a positive real number. It's the set of all vectors X whose distance from X to A is less than R. Okay, what's the distance between two vectors defined as? Well, it's defined as a length of the difference of the vectors which is defined as using the distance formula or using the norm formula, it's defined as the sum of the squares of the coordinate differences and then take the square root, right? Yeah. Okay, so x is x1 to x and a is a1 to n, you take the difference in each coordinate, square, add, and then take the square root. Okay, I'll just, I'll just use this mod x minus a notation. I won't actually use the formula. And actually, it turns out that there are other distance notions you can use which will give the same definition of limit. But I'll just take this one and I'll just use this notation. Okay. So, get back here. So, for every L neighborhood, how would you specify an L neighborhood? What do you need to specify? Radius. The radius, we'll call that epsilon. So, here's the definition. For every epsilon greater than zero okay what next there you is this uh you need to specify a neighborhood of c where c is a vector c and to specify a neighborhood of c you need to specify a radius we'll use the same letter as you do for single variables so mm -hmm. there exists a uh, what letter should we use epsilon no here that epsilon is already used so there uh, is delta sorry delta greater than zero so, I mean, I could use any letter. I'm just trying to use the same letters which you're probably familiar with from the single variable notation because the idea is, is exactly the same. Okay, so there exists a delta greater than zero mm -hmm. such that, now what comes next? So, next we have, next we have that for all x not equal to c in the neighborhood of c. Now, x, you remember, now x is yeah, for all x not equal to c in the neighborhood of c. Okay, now x now becomes the vector x. So, we get for all x, for all x, satisfying what? Well, 
we want it to be in the neighborhood C. So let me remind you, the neighborhoods look like walls. And in this case, this, the, the radius is delta. So it's going to be all the things whose distance from C, now instead of A, you have C, distance from C is less than delta, but you also have to exclude the point C itself. So how would you write that? Well, one way you could write it is 0 is less than, so I'm, I'm, it, this is sort of one way of writing it where it looks very much like the single variable notation. Okay? Is that okay? Yeah. What do we have? Hmm? Fx bar. Hmm? Sorry? Is within the neighborhood of? Epsilon neighborhood of L, so you can write it like this. Okay. Now let me just elaborate a bit on, on these two things. So what does the second thing say? It just says fx is in L minus epsilon L plus epsilon. So remember, the, the function is still a scalar function. Is everything here? Mm -hmm. So f of x, f of x is in the neighborhood. L minus epsilon to L plus epsilon. That's what this is saying. Because here it's just a function of one variable. So the usual one variable ideas work. What is this saying? What is this, this thing here saying? It's saying x is in the ball of radius what? Uh, uh, delta. Delta centered at C. Except you're excluding what point? C. C itself, because that's the one way of taking the limit. So we don't want to consider the value of the point itself. Okay, so that's what that's what this is saying. So x, what, what intuitively, what is this saying? X is close to C. How close? Well, it's more close than delta. Because what's this saying? Mod x minus C is basically just the distance between x and C. Okay, so this is the definition. It just looks almost exactly like the definition for a function of one variable. Now, I just want to say a little more which is really a topic for some other time, but I want to just emphasize the fact that the absolute value of x minus c is less than delta, in particular, tells you that all the coordinates of x are close to the corresponding coordinates of c. If you go back to the formula for distance here, mm -hmm. then, then you have mod x minus is the sum of the, is the, is the square root. x minus a is the square root here. Okay, I'll put it a little higher. Yeah. x minus a is the square root of the sum of the squares of x i minus a i. Right? Mm -hmm. So it's the square root of the sum of the squares of x i minus a i. And so for this thing to be small, each of these has to be small. Right? Mm -hmm. Which means each of the x i are close to the corresponding a i, which in this case would be c i. So so, so if, if this is, is very small, then each of the coordinates is close to the corresponding CI. Okay. So that means that you're making all the coordinates approach the coordinates of the point C. And in some sense, you, it's, it's uniform in all the coordinates. All of them have to, have to be small. So what this is saying is if X is really close to the point in all coordinates, then FX is really close to L. And that's the usual definition of limit.